What's up, turret turn takers? I'm Quackers Coat, and this is the fish fry for November 25th, being held at the spawning grounds. For our cooking utensils, we have the Glugadoolies, the ink brush, the classic squiffer, and the heavy splatling. I don't like calling any composition difficult, but this one is definitely not for the faint of heart. And it almost seems to be a classic with the composition at spawning grounds. We all have weapon rolls to play. With the glugas and the ink brush having the most mobility, definitely do your best to run those eggs for your team. And that classic squiffer and the heavy splatling, you may have to focus on taking out some of those priority targets like stingers and big shots. But you also want to focus a lot of your damage onto cohawks. Those glugas and the ink brush are going to have a problem taking them out. But one good thing about this composition is how easy it is to deal that damage on a high tide. Just like Sockeye Station, the spawning ground fish sticks are in very very bad locations for us. So all these weapons can take them out pretty well, just make sure you know the right way of taking them out. On a low tide things might become a little bit more difficult. The squiffer will definitely need to use their piercing damage in order to clear those lanes. And I hate to send someone to their death, but that ink brush can easily push towards a fly fish, toss a bomb in, and make their way out before they get splat. The ink brush also does a really good job at luring bosses into other places on a low tide, making it easier to spread out enemies all across the low tide, that way they're not all focused right there on the basket. During a glow flies, things can become crazy difficult here. Depending on how good your ink brush user is, and how well the heavy splatling player can prepare their charges, we're going to have to remember our ability to move around, and we may have to use a couple wall hangs. Good luck. On a gorilla's wave, things will be a little bit more easy. Since the ink brush has such a short amount of range, make sure that you put it on small fry control and don't put the brush down, just keep swiping. On a mothership or a mudmouth wave, we have some decent range with some of this composition. So make sure you use the strength of the ink brush to move around and take out those boxes and run those eggs that the other players have popped out. A mudmouth wave should be pretty fun. Just make sure you use the piercing damage of the squiffer to clear out some extra lessers for your teammates. To get a few extra eggs on a goldie seek, make sure you do the trick where you position yourself in front of the goldie while you constantly swipe and try to get as many eggs out of him as possible. The ink brush can be a really fun weapon to use, and on a golden tornado, have a blast with it. Just lead those lessers away from everybody else so that way they can run all the eggs. Don't forget to pop in and grab yourself one and run into the basket too. So hopefully this composition doesn't scare you away from Sam Run for a rotation. We can still have a lot of fun with it. Alright, let's get into the cookware. Our first cooking utensil is the Gluga Doolies. The Gluga Doolies have an extended dodge roll, and they also have a bit of an extended range. Activating turret mode with the Gluga Doolies is really helpful for taking on a fish stick from the ground level, though any extra range or distance away from your enemies you have with this weapon is really helpful. And we always need to remember to not rely on that dodge roll as just a general way of getting away from things. Its delay before you can dodge roll or move again is just way too long. One of the best ways you can really use that dodge roll is to dodge an attack that you get from a cohawk. As mentioned before, it'll be really helpful to follow weapon rolls, so make sure you get this weapon around, dodge roll in, get your attack done, grab an egg, and get out. Toss it up to your teammates that are hopefully up there, creating some support for you. Our second cooking utensil is the ink brush. Their ink brush's brush walk is insanely fast, but it should only be used as a method of getting in, getting out, or popping in to get a revive. It should never be used as an attack in Salmon Run. And this weapon can swipe as fast as you can pull the trigger. So if you're not that good at pulling the trigger that fast, make sure you always have a little bit of height and try to use the attack more like a slosher, where the ink goes up and it falls down onto the enemies. It's really fun to just run around with this weapon, but if you're not dealing damage, then it's going to be easy to get overrun. And don't forget the range of this weapon is so short, it'd be best to prepare a squid roll as you go into a fish stick in order to climb it. Steelheads are one of the biggest rivals of the ink brush, so try to make sure you ping this way, that way your teammates know that you need some help. As I said before, this composition needs rolls filled, so get in, get those eggs, and get them to the basket. Our third cooking utensil is the classic squiffer. 
One really nice thing about the classic Squiffer is it can be played pretty aggressively. Since this weapon has a quick charge and it has piercing damage, you can easily charge it up, hop down to the shoreline, and take out a lot of lessers, or provide some support in taking out some Kohawks, or easily taking out a Steelhead for the Ink Brush. This weapon is also very conservative on ink, so if you keep yourself filled up, it'll be easy to have enough ink to throw a bomb that way you can take out a Flyfish, or take out a Moss that snuck up on you. And this weapon's tap shot is quick enough that it's pretty good at taking out fish sticks too. So choose to either paint that fish stick for your teammates, or get on a little bit higher wall and aim to the right side of their rotation, and those tap shots can take them out pretty quickly. Our last cooking utensil is the Heavy Splatling. With the Heavy Splatling, in all hopes, everyone is filling their role, and you can provide support on all the higher platforms that we have here. This weapon can deal some damage, and it has some pretty good range to it. But if no one's taking out stuff at the docks, then we're going to be overrun pretty quickly. So this weapon and the Ink Brush might be best to be on Stinger Patrol. You can also cause some really good damage to Big Shots, which will be a big problem with this composition. Definitely use the Heavy Splatling like more of a defensive weapon. Always give yourself an exit strategy, and try to see what your teammates are getting into. This weapon can easily take out fish sticks from the ground level before they even started spinning around. On an extra wave, things might be a little bit easier than the regular waves. Since everybody but the Ink Brush has some range, it'll be easy to cause some damage to the Kohozuna without getting too close, and that'll make it easier to break away from combat to take out a boss. But the Ink Brush user should probably be moving all the way around the map, trying to clear out any priority bosses before they become a nuisance. Look out for those stingers and those flyfish. The Ink Brush can easily have enough ink and speed to get in, take them out really quickly, and get some quick golden eggs. Never forget to look for that moment right at the beginning of the extra wave, where you can use your special to not just cause damage to the Kohozuna, but to also take out some bosses, spawning some golden eggs early on in the wave. And the fish fry usually comes out before the stage rotation. So if you want to catch these updates when they're hot and fresh, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. And if you want other fellow Grisco employees to receive these tips, make sure you like and share the video. Bye bye And if you want to give the fish fry an algorithm boost, just comment what your favorite or least favorite weapon is of this composition. I think my favorite's going to have to be the ink brush, to be honest. Just that ability to get in, get out, get a revive really quickly is a really interesting ability to have in this game. It's almost like a white mage or cleric. Alright, bye bye.